Since I'm talking about my unnecessary inventions, how about I show off an invention that I made that I actually sold a decent amount of them. Let's go up, let's go up to the loft. And welcome back to Unnecessary Inventions. So today we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. Just with the whole global pandemic going on, I'm not feeling extra creative to build a brand new unnecessary invention. And luckily, for the past, what, eight years now, I've been living in isolation right here in the unnecessary studio. Okay, well, technically I don't live here, but I spend pretty much all of my time here by myself in the studio designing and making things. So today I'm gonna give you a full 360 tour of the unnecessary studio, all the tools I use, all the things I make, and everything in between. And if this is your very first video of mine that you're watching, my name is Maddie Benedetto. I'm 30 years old, I'm a self-taught product designer in Burlington, Vermont, and I am the evil genius behind unnecessary inventions. So let's take a look at the studio. Oh yeah, so my space is like 900-ish square feet. I think we got 700 here on the first floor. Up in the loft, we have another 200 square feet. 14-ish foot high ceilings, concrete dome. All right, let's jump into the workspace. So here we have my workspace. Pretty much everyone knows based on my inventions that I'm a little bit of an Apple fanboy. So iPhone 11 Pro, MacBook Pro, so here is where I do all of my product designing. I use Fusion 360 to take the idea I have in my head and then model it in the 3D software to bring it to life. So one brand new recent addition, I used to just use the laptop and now I have this LG ultra wide monitor. It is a must have. And then all of this sits on a Vera desk, up and down standing sitting desk, depending on what I'm in the mood for. Let's see what other fun little things we got on my desk. I did get to go on the Kelly Clarkson show, and this is a little letter she wrote me. Matt, thanks so much for taking the time to come hang out with us today. I love the toilet paper earrings, Kelly. She was amazing. Okay, these are kind of cool. I did launch a book earlier this fall called 101 Unnecessary Inventions. So it has kind of the first 101 unnecessary inventions that I made. We have a few different versions that I was working on. So I went through all of these different versions of the book until I landed on the final version, which I don't think are any of these ones. I did just go ahead and self-publish the book by myself because I just wanted it out before Christmas. It is still available on my website. I'll, uh, I'll throw a link to this and then sort of any other gadget or if you wanna check it out for yourself, I'll put the link down below. I am kind of also a Tesla fanboy, so I did uh, 3D print my own little Cybertruck. So since I just mentioned some of the tools, let's go check out the 3D printers I have because that's pretty much where all the magic happens. And right across the way, we've got our two 3D printers that I do all of my product design on. So this little guy here has made probably about 80% of the unnecessary inventions that I've made over the past year. Little workhorse, but also a little bit smaller build volume. This one is called the Mono Price Voxel. And I believe it's just a rebranded Flash Forge Adventurer 3. You can print about five and a half inches in any direction, but the real bad boy is this guy right here. So this 3D printer is an absolute monster, and I honestly think it's probably one of the best 3D printers, relatively affordable 3D printers you can buy right now. This one is called the Quiddy 3D X Max. So this one can print, I think, almost up to 11 inches in any direction, so twice the size of that. I can print enormous prints on this thing. They almost just always come out beautiful. I would really highly, highly recommend this one here. If you have the budget, if not, that one's just a couple hundred bucks, does a great job. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can go check both of those guys out if maybe you're in the market for a 3D printer. Let's head just a little bit further down and check out this whole setup we have here. So then from the 3D printers over here, we kind of have all the 3D printing supplies and our photo shoot supplies. Let's dive into it. So this stuff is the 3D printer filament. It's just a nice thin wire of plastic. It goes into the machine, and then the 3D printer head goes layer by layer until you have your final product. So we got ones here that kind of look like marble, and then like this here is a translucent red that's kind of see-through. This one's like made out of wood. It has wood built right into the filament. But then the next floor is down in this shelf. These are all of my photo backdrops that I use for all of my product photography. So I just need to pick a color that I like, roll it out, and then I can take beautiful product photos against any sort of backdrop that I want. And the way that I'll set these up is I'll pretty much just tack it to the wall, 
and pose. So everyone's favorite part of the studio when they come here is the infamous wall of unnecessary. Hey Mark, here is where I keep all of my unnecessary inventions. Once I've made them, posted them on YouTube, Instagram, everywhere else, they've lived here in the beautiful wall of unnecessary. That is also getting way too crowded and I think I need to buy a second one because half of them are on the ground. So we have some of the favorites like the Gator Visor. Let's see what else do we got. We got the Do Not Paint Rollers back here. We have the brand new Snooping Spectacles here. We have bits and pieces of some Gator Grips that didn't quite make it through. Over here we got the Crispy Case that we did with Bud Light. The Avocado on a Stick, one of the very first viral inventions that I had. We've got the focus frames over here. We have the world's smallest suitcase here that I'm still waiting for Guinness to tell me if I actually got the Guinness World Record. The Snack Mingo, a little bit of everything built into this wall of unnecessary. So once an invention has passed its life cycle on social media, it ends up here. I do get the question a lot is if I start an invention and it never makes it, there's only been like one or two instances of that ever happening. Because for the most part, if an idea is in my head and makes it far enough to start being designed, it's going to make it to social media. And since I only do a YouTube video of maybe every third or fourth invention, should I do a video going through every single invention in one video? I don't know if it's possible, but let me know down in the comments if I should do that. So here it is, the wall of unnecessary. I do, I said this in an earlier video, I wanna make a museum. I wanna take all this stuff and let you guys come visit me somewhere and see it in person, see how it gets made, all of that stuff. So fingers crossed that we get that to happen. Okay, from here, where should we go next? Since I'm talking about my unnecessary inventions, how about I show off an invention that I made that I actually sold a decent amount of them. Let's go up, let's go up to the loft. We've got a defunct 3D printer that I had back in like 2012. We've got the Oculus Quest, my favorite product right now. And then back here we have the entire warehouse section of the studio. So let's go up there. I'm gonna show you a product that I actually designed once and sold. So yeah, I once designed a badass beach chair, so let me show you all of the details. So here's a look at an actual product I designed and sold on the World Wide Web. You know those Tommy Bahama backpack beach chairs? I thought I could do it better, and I did. We've got a mesh bottom so that if you have sand all in your bathing suit and everything, it just falls through. That's genius. Also, the closure system is this carabiner, so you can lock it, but then also you can attach your bag to it Lock it there. Not only that, the headrest that is ultra comfortable has a secret pocket back here. So maybe you wanna throw your wallet and your phone and your keys. Boom, safely behind your head on the headrest. What else we got? Oh, duh. Everyone likes an ice cold beverage on the beach. We've got two can sleeves. So you can fit a full six pack on your way to the beach, bring some beers, hang out with the boys, and to top it off a nice, towel drying rack that flips up and down. And just your luck, they're completely out of stock. But hey, here we are, we're in the upstairs. So this is all inventory for products that I'm selling online that are necessary. There's a few unnecessary products up here that you can get at the Unnecessary Invention Store. Let's get a nice upstairs view of the studio. So I do actually have windows. All the views I ever do are pointing this way. So people always think that I'm working in a storage unit or something like that. But I do actually have some daylight. But down here in the warehouse, I know I have some pizza fanny packs. Yep, there they are. So let's go show off maybe one of my unnecessary products that you can buy. Because who doesn't like a little pizza fanny pack so you can carry all of your pizza around when you're hitting the streets, except right now, all of the restaurants in all of Burlington, Vermont are closed. Get your two perfect slices of pizza right here and you're good to go. Let us go check out all of the nooks and crannies of the rest of this studio. So I just realized I have a brand new machine that I haven't shown off yet on this channel. We got a laser cutter. Let us turn it on. We have ourselves a Glowforge. That's right, this is a laser cutter. So basically I can cut all sorts of materials out using a laser beam. 
So since I haven't really shown this thing off, let's make a sign for the unnecessary studio in like 20 seconds. And I'm gonna show you how this thing works. Okay, the steps we need to do, we're gonna design a logo, then we're gonna hit print on there. We're going to put a quick little layer of polyurethane on top, glue the letters on, and we'll be A-OK. -okay. So let's get into it. And just like that, we've got ourselves a studio sign. A nice walnut base and a Baltic birch on top. I gotta say, this is looking pretty good. So I think for my next invention, I'm only gonna be using the Glowforge. I gotta think up something good, but use that, not the 3D printer. But I'm gonna throw a link down below and you can actually get the Glowforge up to 500 bucks off if you use my referral link. So if you wanna make some awesome cool signs like this, Go, uh, go check out the Glowforge. But let's go hit up some more shelves and see what the studio has to offer. Up above the Glowforge, we have the very infamous Gator Grips, AKA the Croc Gloves, and the cease and desist that I got as well. I've got a local Vermont newspaper that also called me a genius, looking pretty good. All of these magazines also have featured some of my products that I've designed, which is pretty awesome. Let's go down here. And underneath all of that stuff, we have some camera equipment. We got some extra lenses. We got some flashes. We have the dead cat. Everyone needs a dead cat. It's for a microphone. And one really fun thing down here I have is like every single cell phone, but they're all completely fake. I just pretty much use them for props and all that kind of stuff. I don't really care what happens to them, obviously. I've got like a iPad mini as well. Does the trick. And moving on to the other side. And this rack over here is sort of like all tools and accessories that I can use when I'm trying to build something. We've got tape. We've got endless supply of scissors. I go through more things of super glue than any human being needs to, but I got plenty of super glue on lock. All of the fun mold making tools so I can go ahead and make silicone molds when I need to maybe like mold my hand for an invention. In here we have a whole bunch of fabric scraps from fabric bits to yarn and paracord. We got some net here. A little bit of everything because you never know what I'm gonna build or what accessory I'm gonna need. And then the last shelf over here has on this side is where I keep all of my tools. We got two sewing machines. We've got a sander. We've got a heat gun. We've got some electric saw. We've got a jigsaw, I think that's what it's called. We've got a drone down here, actually. And to be quite honest, power tools are not my specialty. Mainly, I just don't trust myself. Something like this that can't cut my arm off unless I'm actually cutting my arm off, I do okay with. But then you bring one of these guys and I start to pee my pants a little bit. Oh, every, uh, every studio needs a hot glue gun. You can't, uh, you can't five minute crafts without a hot glue gun here. What did I miss? I don't know, what did I miss? We got some camera equipment over here. We got some lighting. We've got some microphones. We've got some extra stands. We've got some more lights set up. But other than that, that might be everything that I can show you in the studio. So yeah, so this is where I spend 99% of my time thinking up random, ridiculous inventions and building them here nonstop 24 seven. Did you enjoy getting a better look into everything that I do? It's kind of a nice little change of pace of not always trying to think and make something brand new each week, kind of giving you a little glimpse into everything that I do. So I think that's it. I'm gonna just keep self quarantining myself in here I'm gonna go play some ping pong on the Oculus Quest. I'm gonna go finish up that alarm clock invention I said I was working on. I gave you an in-depth look at the studio. I showed you all the tools I use. I showed you all the machines I have. We made a sign and you got the inside scoop. What more do you need, people? I'm going to officially sign off and I will see you at the next invention. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, and uh, stay safe out there. See ya.